Hi guys, Mrs. Graves here. Um, I'm gonna read you guys a story from Grimm's Fairy Tales. There's a lot in here, so I picked a nice short one uh, that you may not have heard of. This one is called The Hare and the Hedgehog, not the tortoise and the hare, the hare and the hedgehog. Uh, so the original story for the tortoise and the hare was actually a hedgehog, not a tortoise. So we're gonna see how that goes. And there unfortunately aren't any pictures, so, I thought it might be fun to make our own painting, make our own picture. So, I will be reading this. I'll probably put myself in like a small box up here um, and then show you guys the painting while I'm reading it. So, the hare and the hedgehog. It was a fine summer's morning just before harvest time. The buckwheat was in flower and the sun was shining brightly in the heaven above. A breeze was blowing over the fields where the larks were singing. And along the paths, <laughs> hi Gomez. Um, hi. Come here. Apparently, we have a reading partner. Come on, come on, Gomez. Come on. There you go. Uh, this is my cat Gomez. Some of you guys know I have cats. This is one of them. So apparently, he's gonna join us. Let's try this again. It was a fine summer's morning, just before harvest time. The buckwheat was in flower and the sun was shining brightly in the heaven above. A breeze was blowing over the field where the larks were singing and along the paths the people were going to church dressed in their best. Every creature seemed contented, even the hedgehog, who stood before his door singing as best he could a joyful song in the praise of the fine morning. Indoors, meanwhile, his wife was washing and drying the kitchen before going into the fields for a walk to see how the crops were getting on. She was such a long while, however, about her work that Mr. Hedgehog would wait no longer and trotted off by himself. He had not walked any very long distance before he came to a small thicket near a field of cabbages, and there he aspired a hare, who he guessed had come on a similar errand to himself, namely to devour a few fine heads. As soon as Mr. Hedgehog saw the hare, he wished him a good morning, but the latter who was in the who was in his way, a high-minded creature, turned a very fierce and naughty look upon the hedgehog and made no reply to his greeting. He asked and said in a very majestic tone how he came to be walking abroad at such an early hour. I'm taking a walk, replied the hedgehog. A walk, repeated the hare in an ironical tone. Methinks you might employ your legs about something better. This answer vexed the hedgehog most dreadfully, for he could have borne anything better to, uh, than to be quizzed about his legs, because they were naturally short and from no fault of his own. However, he said to the hare, Well, you need not be so proud. Pray what you can but those legs of yours. That is my affair, replied the hare. I expect if you would venture a trial that I should beat you in a race, said the hedgehog. You are laughing, you with your short legs, said the hare contemptuously. But still, since you have such a particular wish, I have no objection to try. What shall the wager be? Ah, uh, some coins, replied the hedgehog. Done, said the hare, and it may as well come off at once. No, not in such grace haste if you please, said the hedgehog. I'm not quite ready yet. I must first go home and freshen up a bit. Within half an hour, I will return to this place. Thereupon, the hedgehog hurried off, leaving the hare very merry. On his way home, the former brought to himself, Mr. Hare is very haughty and high-minded, but withal he is very stupid, and although he thinks he could beat me with his long legs, I will find a way to defeat him. So as soon as the hedgehog reached home, he told his wife to dress herself at once to go into the field with him. What is the matter? asked his wife. I have made a wager with a hare for coins. To run a race with him, you must be witness. My goodness, man. Are you in your senses? said the wife. Do you know what you are about? How can you expect to run as fast as a hare? 
Hold your tongue, wife. That is my affair. Don't you reason about men's business. March and get ready to come with me. As soon as the hedgehog's wife was ready, they set out together. And on the way, he said, now, attend to what I say. On the long field yonder, we shall decide our bet. The hare is to run on one side of the hedge and I on the other. And so all you have to do is stop at one end of the hedge and then the hare arrives on the other side at the same point you must call out, I'm here already. They soon came to the field and the hedgehog stationed himself at one end of the hedge and his wife at the other end. And as soon as they had taken their places, the hare arrived. Are you ready to start? asked the hare. Yes, answered the hedgehog and each took his place. Off once, off twice, three times, and off, cried the hare, and ran up the field like a whirlwind, while the hedgehog only took three steps and returned to his place. The hare soon arrived at his goal, as he ran all the way at top speed, but before he could reach it, the hedgehog's wife on the other side called out, I'm here already! The hare was thunderstruck to hear this said for he thought it was really his opponent, since there was no difference in the appearance of the hedgehog. This will not do, thought the hare to himself, but presently he called out, once, twice, and off again, and away he went as fast as possible, leaving the hedgehog quietly sitting in her place. I'm here before you, cried Mr. Hedgehog as soon as the hare approached. What? Again? exclaimed the hare in a rage, and added, will you dare another trial? Oh, as many times as you'd like. Do not be afraid on my account, said Mr. Hedgehog courteously. So the hare then ran backwards and forwards three and seventy times. But each time the hedgehogs had the advantage of him for either Mr. or Mrs. shouted before he could reach the goal. Here I am already. The four and seventieth time, the hare was unable to run any more. In the middle of the course, he stopped and dropped down quite exhausted. And there he lay motionless for some time. But the hedgehog took the coins, uh, which he had won, and went composedly home with his wife.